morning everyone myself raja surya from the computer applications department sfr college sivakasi today we are going to see about transmission control protocol in computer networks so first of all why we are using transmission control protocol so it is a main protocol of the internet protocol suite and it lies between application and network layer so which are giving a reliable delivery services it is a connection oriented protocol uh, that across over the network and this internet protocol which it establishes the technique for sending packets between computers that works with tcp and here is the diagrammatic representation of tcp so here you can see that the tcp ip it lies between network and application layer so next we'll see the purpose of tcp so tcp it is a layer architecture and the whole task is divided into smaller task each task is assigned to a particular layer that pro processes the task in the tcp ip model five layers are application layer transport layer network layer data link layer and physical layer the transport layer has a critical role in providing end to end communication to the directly application processes it creates more than 65000 ports so that the multiple applications can be accessed at the same time it takes the data from the upper layer and it divides the data into smaller packets then transmit the smaller packets into the network layer and next working of tcp so to make sure that each message reaches its target location the tcp ip model breaks down the data into small bundles and reassemble the bundle into original message on the opposite end sending the information in little bundles makes it simpler to maintain efficiency to sending everything in a go after a particular message is broken down into bundles these bundles may travel along multiple routes that is if one route is jammed but the destination remains the same so this is the working of the tcp protocol so for example when a user request a web page on the internet maybe somewhere in the world the server processes that request and send back an html page to the user so the server make use of a protocol that is http protocol so this http request the tcp layer to set the required connection and send the html file so now the tcp breaks the data into small packets and forward it towards the internet protocol layer the packets are then sent to the destination through different routes so you can see in the diagram Uh, the data are sent and finally it gets the acknowledgement so the tcp layer in the user system wait for the transmission to get finished and acknowledges once all the packets have been received so next we'll see about the features of tcp ip the first feature is segment numbering system so tcp keep track of the segments being transmitted or received by assigning numbers to each and every single of them a specific byte number is assigned to data bytes that are to be transferred while segments are assigned sequence number so acknowledgement numbers are assigned to receive the segments so and the next feature is connection oriented it means sender and receiver are connected to each other till the completion of the process the order of the data is maintained that is order remains same before and after transmission the next feature is full duplex in tcp data can be transmitted from receiver to the sender at the same time it increases efficiency of data flow between sender and receiver and the fourth feature is flow control flow control limits the rate at which a sender transfers data this is done to ensure reliable delivery the receiver continually hints to the sender on how much of data can be received 
So on the next feature is error control. TCP implements an error control mechanism for reliable tra data transfer. Error control is byte oriented. Segments are checked for error direction. So and the next feature is congestion control. TCP takes into account the level of congestion in the network. Congestion level is determined by the amount of data sent by the sender. So these are all the features of TCP IP. So next we will see the advantages of TCP IP. It provides a connection oriented reliable service which means that it guarantees the delivery of data packets. If the data packet is lost across the network then the TCP will resend the lost packet. And the next one is it provides a flow control mechanism using a sliding window protocol and it provides error detection by using checksum and error control by using go back or ARP protocol. It eliminates the congestion by using a network congestion avoidance algorithm that includes various schemes such as additive increase or multiplicative decrease, slow start and congestion window. So next we will see the TCP header format. So in the picture you can clearly understand the TCP header format. The first one is source port. It defines the port of the application which is sending the data and this field contains the source port address which is 16 bit address and the next one is destination port. It defines the port of the application on the receiving side and this field also has a 16 bit address and the next one is the sequence number. This field contains the sequence number of data bytes in a particular session and the next header one is acknowledgement number. When the ACK flag is set then this contains the next sequence number of the data byte and works as an acknowledgement for the previous data received. For example, if the receiver receives the segment number x, then it responds x plus 1 as an acknowledgement number. And the next one is hlen. It specifies the length of the header indicated by the 4 byte words in the header. The size of the header is between 20 and 60 bytes. So the value of the field would lies between 5 and 15 and next one is the reserved. It is a 4 bit field reserved for feature use and by default this field is set to 0 and these are all the flags present in the TCP header. The first one is URG and it represents the urgent pointer. If it is set then the data is processed urgently. And next flag is ACK. If the ACK is set to 0, then it means that the data packet does not contain an acknowledgement. And the next flag is PSH. If this field is set, then it requests the receiving device to push the data to the receiving application without buffering it. And the next flag is RST. If it is set, then it requests to restart a connection. And next flag is sync. It is used to establish a connection between the host. And the last flag is fin. It is used to release a connection and no data exchange will happen. So these are all the flags present in the TCP header format. And the next header is the window size. It is a 16 bit field and it contains the size of data that the receiver can accept. This field is used for the flow control between the sender and receiver. It also determines the amount of buffer allocated by the receiver for a segment. The value of this field is determined by the receiver. And the next one is checksum. It is a 16 bit field. This field is optional in UDP but in the case of TCP IP this field is mandatory and it is used to check for the error or damage of the data transmitted to the sender site and it checks the error using the some algorithms checksum algorithm 
and the next one is the urgent pointer. It is a pointer that points to the urgent data type. If the URG flag is set to 1, it defines a value that it will be added to the sequence number to get the sequence number of the last urgent byte. And the last one is options and padding. It provides additional options and this is a 32 bit feed. If this field contains the data less than 32 bit, then padding is required to obtain the remaining bit. And today we saw the TCP control protocol. So what is TCP control protocol and why we are using TCP control protocol, sorry transmission control protocol. And the next we saw about a working of TCP and the features, advantage and finally we saw about TCP header format. So today we saw about transmission control protocol, why we are using transmission control protocol and working of TCP and the, we saw about the features of TCP IP, advantages and finally we saw about TCP header format. Thank you for watching this. We will catch you in some other video. Thank you.